dare you talk to me so rudely, Pete? Stretch your arm. You deserve a beating. No! Miss Cummings was going to punish Pete unnecessarily again. However, she was unaware that it was not Pete, but his twin sister Cherry in front of her. Wow, not only are you stupid, but now you're rude too? You must have taken after your mother. Oh, wait, that isn't quite right. You are an illegitimate weasel. Do not talk to me that way. You are the rude one. Ah, I hear the door. That must be your father. You are gonna have it tonight. Miss Cummings got up to meet Justin, who just entered the room. Ah, Miss Cummings. Just the person I want to talk to. What Nora had told Justin about Pete's tutors kept whirring in his head, and he aimed to clear it up immediately. But before he could start... Mr. Hunt, I'm afraid I've got bad news. Pete is not progressing at all. Having observed his deteriorating intellect all these months, it is safe to say that he needs some sort of special school. Miss Cummings, that's presumptuous and degrading. Pete is a hunt, and hunts are smart. Besides, I've seen him solving advanced math problems too. I think you need to improve your methods. Miss Cummings was tongue-tied. She didn't expect Justin to retort as he usually didn't. She sensed Justin's foul mood and tried to manipulate him. Yes, sir, but... I've tried all the ways I could. That's enough, Miss Cummings. I think I need to find a better tutor for my son. Lawrence, settle her wages immediately. The tutor was shocked at the sudden turn taken by her usually polite employer, but she didn't let it slide easily. I'm the top domestic tutor in the state, Mr. Hunt. My advice is undoubtedly in Pete's best interest, but since you refuse to listen to the truth, forget I said anything. I enjoyed myself very much during my time with Pete. Goodbye. Lawrence, give her the next six months' salary, too. Miss Cummings was over the moon by Justin's offer. However, Cherry, who was listening to their conversation, was unhappy. I can't let her go without punishment. She treated Pete badly. She must pay for it. Cherry got to work the next second Miss Cummings turned to the door. She bolted out of the room to Justin and asked him, Daddy, am I an illegitimate weasel? Justin was taken aback by his son's words. He didn't have a clue that it was Cherry and not Pete in front of him. Am I really stupid? Is it Mommy's fault that I'm not as smart as you? No, Pete, no. Who told you these things? Miss Cummings. Justin's piercing gaze landed on Miss Cummings, who stood there as though she was electrocuted. Pete, what are you saying? You shouldn't lie. Cherry took it a little further. She went behind Justin and started crying. I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Cummings. Please don't hit me again. <laughs> Please. Lawrence, take her out. Pete, can you go inside your room and play for a while? Yes, Daddy. With her job done, Cherry slipped into Pete's room. An angry Justin stormed into the next room where Lawrence was interrogating Miss Cummings. Sir, this woman was bribed by her uncle to treat little Pete poorly. So was the other tutor. What did they do to him? They didn't teach him properly and have hit him many times. I'm so sorry, sir. I, I should have kept an eye on them. Justin's eyes had turned red in rage. He moved closer to the trembling Miss Cummings. You'll never work with children again, you hear me? You're done. Get out of my sight. Throw her out, Lawrence. Do not give her wages. And yes, lodge a police complaint. Mr. Hunt, please, please, don't do this. My life will be ruined. You should have thought about it before abusing my little boy for money. As Miss Cummings continued to plead, Justin walked away and made his way to Pete's room. Pete, I'm so sorry, son. Daddy, you don't have to apologize. It wasn't your mistake. Yes, but I could have prevented it. Justin reassured his son. Once he left the room, Cherry pulled out her phone and called Pete. Hey, Pete, I have a gift for you. Miss Cummings won't be teaching you anymore. Pete, who was in Nora's room, was confused by Cherry's declaration. What? What happened? I told Dad about her behavior, and he kicked her out. See, this is why you should speak up. You owe me a gift for saving you. Thanks, Cherry. Cherry, what are you doing over there? Pete froze at Nora's blaring voice. Who are you talking to on the phone, Cherry? Nobody, Mom. I, I was just... Let me guess. Playing games. Cherry, you need to stop using your phone so much. Okay, Mommy. Okay? That was easy. <laughs> Are you even Cherry? Nora's words sent a chill down Pete's spine. Pete and Cherry had switched places to spend time with Nora and Justin respectively. Pete wasn't as confident as Cherry and couldn't help but fumble at the thought of being caught. Cherry, 
What is up with you? You don't seem yourself. Nothing, Mom. I'm just tired. Can I go to bed early? Poor baby. You are so well behaved when you are tired. <laughs> sure, you can go to bed, but not without dinner first. Nora and Pete took off to have dinner together. Back in Justin's room, Cherry was struggling. Justin had taken it upon himself to tutor his son. He gave advanced math problems that Pete was well versed in, which put Cherry in an awkward position as she wasn't acquainted with them. Come on, Pete. You sure can solve this problem. It's not that tough. Daddy, I can't. I'm tired. After a lot of pushing, Justin finally gave up and let Cherry play. But he was worried and shared his concerns with Lawrence. What have they done to Pete? A month ago, he had no trouble solving those problems. But now... Sir, if I may, go ahead. Considering what he has been through, I think Pete needs a break from studying for a little while. Maybe we can let him indulge in some fun activities for a few days so that it helps him refocus. Justin saw the truth in Lawrence's words and canceled all his plans to take his son out the next day. Cherry heard Justin's plan and saw an opportunity. She went back to Pete's room and called him. Pete, why did you take so long to pick up? Stop calling me abruptly. I'm scared Mom would catch me talking to you. Stop being a chicken, will you? And why are you whispering? Where are you now? In the room. We just came back from dinner. Mom put me in bed and went to take a shower. Great! Now listen to me. Dad and I are going to the movies tomorrow. You need to convince Mom and bring her too. We will turn this into a date. What? How did you do that? Dad never takes me out to the movies. It is something I would like to call Cherry's Charm. As per Cherry's instructions, Pete waited for Nora to come out of the shower and asked if they could go watch a movie tomorrow. Oh, I don't know, baby. I have a lot of work to do tomorrow. Can we go this weekend? Please, Mom. I don't get to spend time with you at all. I miss you. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I've been busy. I will take you to watch a movie tomorrow. Better yet, let's have a Mommy and Cherry day like we used to. Pete was thrilled at Nora's response. The next day, Nora and Pete and Justin and Cherry made it to the movies. How does the date go? Do the kids succeed in their plans to make their parents fall in love? Do Nora and Justin discover the truth about their children? To find out what happens next, don't let your excitement die. The full audio series is on the Pocket FM app. Tap the link in the description to install now.